Hey guys, this is OC. I'm here to help you guys out today with uh, listeners. Uh, last time we were here, we worked on how to work with um, regular uh, interfaces. So this time we want to take a look at actual, like how do I use a, an interface in an actual setting that actually is useful as opposed to bleaching cats and stuff like that, which seems really bad. But anyway, um, so uh, let's take a look at actually how we use it um, in, in a real sense in Java. And that'll let us use uh, interfaces with a little more uh, applicability. So it's actually going to be useful as opposed to, oh, look, I can guarantee contracts of objects and all this great stuff. So uh, what I've set up here, again, this is another demo that you can download from uh, the comment section. I'll, I'll post this whole project there for you. Um, but what I have here is I, I've essentially set up uh, a demonstration where we're just gonna we're gonna do a listener called punch in the face so it's gonna be a, a little applet that pops up and it's gonna have a button you click it it's gonna punch you in the face okay so um, so to start start this up first thing we do is we make a J frame so you know whenever we want to make a graphical object we gotta have a frame to put things on so I'm gonna make a frame so we make a J frame by saying J frame frame equals new J frame and you give it a title here okay so this one's called the punch in the face you know, applet. So uh, I'm uh, and that's actually an application on applet. Um, so we're actually gonna uh, that'll make it. Okay. Um, later on, I will set the default close operation. You can do that whenever technically. Like I could actually do that right here. The goal with that is um, on Windows, uh, it's not as big of a deal, but on on Linux and Mac, it's more of a bigger deal. Uh, we set that default close operation on it um, to actually exit the application when it's done because if we don't when you hit close on Mac and Linux boxes um, it'll actually let the program still run but it doesn't have a visual screen anymore so uh, we always set the default close operation it's kind of a standard thing to do unless you don't want to do it for some reason I mean there are reasons where you wouldn't want an actual like graphical object like you know if your program is something that just runs in the background or something like that so uh, but we're gonna go ahead and keep that in there. now I want to put a little button on our frame so I want to put a little button that we can click and it's gonna punch you in the face Okay, so uh, we make a button by making a J button. All right, uh, so we, I'm going to make a J button. I'm going to call it my punch button, um, and it's a new J button. And you provide the text you want on the button right there. So it's going to be a button that says "punch me." Okay, um, and so now I have a frame, I have a button, and so now I just need to put that. So I have I have a frame, and then I have a button. So now I need to put the button on the frame, and then that'll allow me to click. It. Okay, right now the button is just in space. Oh my god. All right, so if we want to add the button to the frame, we tell the frame, hey, uh, frame add, and it says add component. Well, we're going to add actually the punch button onto this. Okay, and so that'll add punch button. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is tell the frame it's okay to go ahead and set itself visible. So we'll set it visible true, and that'll allow it to actually go ahead and, and, and turn on and, and view. Okay, so now we have a basic frame with a basic button on. So let's go ahead and just um, run this, actually. Um, not the punch listener. Let's run this. Run file. So uh, this will pop up in a second or two. What Oh, didn't set the size. My bad. Okay, need to set the size of this. There it is. Okay, so punch in the face. So now I can click it. Yay! I can oh, it doesn't do anything. Thing. Oh, but you can see it clicks. So it's like you click it and something happens, but nothing happens. Like you can tell it's actually activating. It's actually doing something, but it's not actually doing anything. So how do I get a button to actually do something? Well, that's the purpose of an interface. Because there's so many different ways to implement the way you want to listen for something, you actually have to implement your own action listener. And so we actually have to say, and, and we have to give it to the button to say, hey, you know, these are the people who are listening for something that's going to happen. So it's kind of like, like you, you actually want a door knocks. You're always listening for door knocks. So you're like, you're listening. You're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And then somebody knocks and you respond to that. You perform an action based on what happened. So the door knock is an action. It's like, and then you respond to it. Now, some action listeners would be like, shut up, go away. Some action listeners will get up and go open the door. Some action listeners might, you know, go see who it is, things like that. So um, that's what we want to do. Okay, um, so the big thing here is we want to actually add an action listener that's going to do something for us. Okay, so uh, we would make another object called a punch listener. Okay, and in this punch listener, uh, you can call it anything you want. You can call it donkey listener, bob listener, uh, uh, lolerkin listener, whatever you want. Um, so 
Uh, it says public class punch listener, so I'm just going to make a punch listener. And then I'm going to implement action listener. So again, this is, a, this is what we do with interfaces. I'm just guaranteeing that I'm going to implement a method that action listeners have and that I can actually be called upon by somebody and they know I'll be having the action perform method. Because otherwise, I, I can't just add I can't just add anything to the button to say, hey button, you know, gosh, this guy is gonna this guy is going to be uh, listening, and and here's this magical method you need to call. Like it doesn't know what to call the method. It doesn't without you guaranteeing the name of the method that you're gonna call, it's not gonna know what to call. So we implement the action listener. So this punch listener is an action listener and would have the action perform method. So the button could actually then have that listener to perform upon, okay? Now, in the action perform, you get past this event called action event. It tells you some information, like you could do E dot, um, it could get modifiers, get, it mirrors a parameter string, could be a command that was passed along. And right now, we're not gonna worry about it. Right now, I'm just gonna do something very simple. I'm just gonna print line, uh, bam! Chuck Norris punch in the face. Bam! And so that's all that's going to happen. So this, when action, so when the button gets clicked, the action that this listener will perform will be that I'll just system out print line. Okay. So what I have to do now is I have to tell the button, hey, there's somebody listening for it. It's kind of like it's like when you make a door and you come in, you have to add yourself as a listener for that door. Sometimes, sometimes doors get people. At, you know, people come in and their doors don't actually they don't actually listen for door knocks or anything like that. So we actually have to tell this button that there's somebody going to be that it needs to have somebody listen for it. So I'm gonna add an action listener and I'm gonna add in uh, a new punch listener. And that's it. Now, again, you could have actually specifically uh, called the punch listener. You could have defined this as punch listener PL equals a new punch listener, yay. Okay, and that's just gonna create, and I would've added PL there. Um, it's just, since I never need that reference again, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna pass along a, what we call an anonymous reference. Um, and now that's gonna, now this button has an action, has somebody listening. Someone's like, oh, lo, 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 what's going on? Oh, you clicked. And so the button says, hey, anybody who's listening, here's what you're gonna do. And to add that action listener, it has to polymorphize this punch listener to an action listener. So that's another reason polymorphism is really, really important. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this file and we should see, you know, the punch listener do something. Okay, I forgot to hit the size again. Okay, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and punch me. Bam! Chuck Norris punch in the face! Bam! Chuck Norris punch in the face! Bam! Chuck Norris punch in the face! Bam! 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 Okay, and so that's how, that's essentially what a listener does. And so you could actually, a button could, doesn't have to have just one listener. You, we, we could make another listener. Like, for instance, I could make, uh, let's call it the Loller listener. And by the way, you don't have to call it listener. It's just, it's commonplace to call that that. Because you're just, that's what it is. And this, so what's this going to implement again? Oh, it's a listener. It's going to implement, uh, oh, action listener. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And of course, we have to import it, as always. And then NetBeans is nice and it's like, oh, yeah, well, you'll need to override all these methods. And you're like, okay. All right. And then this one will say, uh, this one will system.out.println all. You okay over there? And that's all that does. Okay. And then so on my demo, this button can have more than one person listening for it. Dot add action listener. A new... Loller listener, and there you go. So now it's got two things listening for it. Okay, kind of like if you're in a room with two people and somebody knocks, one person's like, "Go away," and the other person's like, "No, no, no, I'll go open the door." Okay, so that's that's the idea of having two listeners. That's really neat. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna add in a listener's demo, and we're gonna run this. I'm, I should really set the size of my frame at some point here. Okay, um, and see. Oh, you okay over there? Bam! Chunk North punch in the face. Bam! 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 Okay. What's kind of interesting is, did you notice what kind of um, uh, storage, data storage device they must use in order to make this work? Because if I clear this off, and then I bring up my button, and I hit punch me, all you okay over there printed out before, bam! Chuck North punch in the face. 
And which one did I add first? I added in the punch listener, and then I added in the action listener. So I added one in, and then I added the other in. And then so when it goes to execute all the objects that are listening on it, it does this one first. So the last one that went in got executed first. Last in, first out. That's a stack. Yeah, they stack them up on top of each other. So they get executed in sort of reverse order. Okay, pretty neat. Anyway, so um, that that's the purpose of a listener. Okay, and that's what's really freaking cool about listeners. So it's, it's a reason we need polymorphism because now the J buttons can just call them action listeners. And these action listeners might actually be, you know, a lot of that. I mean, it could be a person that implements action listener and it's listening for that button to be pressed. Okay, um, so, so that's, that's another reason you want polymorphism. Um, and then it implements the interface of the action listener, so it, it's going to guarantee it's going to have at least this method. It can have a bajillion other methods, but it's going to at least have that method. Okay, and then, uh, then we add it, set it visible, and, and that's what it does. Pretty cool. So uh, next time we're going to take a look at inner classes because you're going to see that very commonly with listeners because a lot of time listeners need access to uh, other values that are within the same file. Um, so like for instance, you, a button is going to modify something of another object. So you can have it as a separate file because you run into scope problems then. So we'll look at inner classes after that, okay? But this is how you do listeners. So I'll see you guys next time.